Uh, let's talk about supermarkets. Supermarkets' ability to keep their staff safe and indeed their ability to keep their goods safe from being stolen by shoplifters. Let's talk to Peter Blacksley. He's a former Metropolitan Police detective. Good morning to you, Peter. Good morning. Well, thank you very much indeed for joining us. I mean, two stories really very much combined. The Tesco boss has been speaking this weekend about having to offer body cams to his staff after 200 assaults on staff every month. Okay, a lot of staff employed by Tesco, huge big retailer, but still one is too many. Uh, but rising violent attacks, but also extraordinary situation. You and I, we just always find it bamboozlingly amazing that the Chris Philp, the policing minister, has to say that shoplifters must face the law. And even if they steal less than two, £200 worth of goods, they should still face prosecution. This is something that uh, uh, people who run stores uh, have been crying out for. Oh, absolutely. Whether that be your local news agent who runs it as a small family business, the convenience store where you go to get your bread and your milk when yeah. you don't want to go to the supermarket, or it's the massive retailers, the Tesco's, the John Lewis the Waitrose and the like. Yeah. I fully support Ken Murphy, CEO of Tesco's here, in wanting to roll out body-worn videos for their staff. But there's a couple of words of caution. Firstly, optimistically, when the police started wearing body-worn videos, there was substantial evidence to show that it de-escalated some situations. That would be a good thing. Yeah. But secondly, these body-worn videos are going to gather evidence evidence of theft, potentially evidence of assaults. Now, this evidence mustn't be allowed to just languish in some computer server. Yes. These, the evidence must be compiled, put into packages, and the retailers must insist that they prosecute oh, well, these offenders. All very well them doing that. Again, I've spoken to loads of managers of local high street stores, from, including the big major supermarket and others, and they say, we've got CCTV footage, we've got witnesses, we know the names of the people, we've got everything there. Police still won't prosecute. Yeah, absolutely. Well, there are a number of private security companies who have prosecutions departments. And I would urge the retailers to reach out to these companies who are, not surprisingly, a growing industry. They are capable, they are largely staffed by experienced former police officers. And Have you got shares are... in one of these companies, Peter? I just want to check. Most definitely not, Julia. <laughs> I, <am laughs> I want to customer. ask. <laughs> My integrity is not for sale. <laughs> I have no connection or financial interest in any of these companies. But, but, no, I'm sure I, would, I was joking. But, Peter, honestly, I don't think that any business, any any individual should ever have to resort to going to a private prosecution. Same way, I was pulled by that story that Waitrose were basically saying, you can have free tea and coffee if you're a police officer because they want to have more police officers coming in and out of their stores. Well, what about the local retailer that can't afford to offer free teas and coffees? It's basically a bribe. I'm sorry, I think it's really wrong. I think police officers are perfectly capable of buying their own sodding tea and coffee, as is everyone else. Who, who, who's going to work. It, it just strikes me that we've just said, we'll just give up on this. And they say they haven't got the resources. If police have got time to go and get a tea and coffee while they're on their shift, then they've got time to go and arrest somebody for shoplifting. And astonishingly, this came from Waitrose, part of the John Lewis partnership, who have a non-intervention policy yeah. with regards to shoplifters. So talk about trying to have an each way bet, having your cake and eat it. Yeah. Um, it was astonishing. And of course, police leaders were very remiss and very quiet because did we hear from them? Were officers going to be allowed to accept this gratuity or yeah. would it be a disciplinary offence? As per usual, police leadership was nowhere to be found. No, indeed. It is just extraordinary. Though. We, 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 we talk about, you know, the violence in shops and, and what's happening there as well as shoplifting. Again, a lot of the security guards and others, they have a non-intervention -inter non uh, policy simply because they, they're going to get violently assaulted and nothing's going to be done about that either. They then spend months off work uh, injured um, and they just think, what's the point? No one's going to prosecute anyway. Do you think there is an increased issue with lawlessness? All of the surveys, these you know, the crime surveys, uh, which have been very reliable over the years, say that you know crime is going down. Crime has changed a lot. There's a lot more you know online crime, but but and it's certainly still victims. But but you know in terms of day to day crime, it's going down. And yet the feeling of lawlessness that most of us feel, the feeling of intimidation by frankly, feral youths, I'm sorry, but completely feral youths who, who've had no concept whatsoever of just 
behaving in a civilised fashion around other people in terms of whether it's feet on seats on the train and playing your music loud, whether it's spitting, whether it's just being aggressively intimidating, you're pushing past people, riding, I mean, whether it's just, you know, riding your scooter on the on the pavement at high speed past, you know, a mum pushing a buggy with a little kid on side. I mean, the sort of just behaviour which, frankly, in my day, if you did do something like that, you'd get a clip round the ear, or not, if you just buy a copper, but by anyone, any adult passing, and then your parents would congratulate them for it. Are, are we seeing a growth of antisocial, violent behaviour? Most definitely, because the crime figures, as they are recorded, worrying as they are, are actually not a true reflection on the state of the lawlessness, because so many people fall victims of crime and just don't report it, because they know they will get no investigation and the police will begrudgingly issue them with a crime reference number. So, so much crime yeah. is just not on the radar. And, of course, why did this happen? Because, largely, the police surrendered the streets when they stopped patrolling them. Because, of course, an officer who went out and patrolled his beat for the day, we couldn't measure his effectiveness or her effectiveness. Well, what nonsense that was. And, of course, the chickens have come home to roost. Police leaders would tell you, we're too busy dealing with other matters, but surrendering the streets was an absolutely abhorrent thing and consequently we are all a bit less safe than we used to be. Certainly feels that way. Peter Blexey, former Metropolitan Police Detective, always good to hear your voice.